Please watch the Short Fishing for Freedom video. This video will prove to you that for the last 10 years, the FWC have lied to you about the commercial viability of debts provided the commercial fishing industry to make a living with, and furthermore, lied to you about the constitutional due process available through the court system. Let us start you out with a statement made by Chief Judge Edwin Browning, Jr., the first DCA, to the FWC. Then we'll cover the nets, and then we'll cover the due process. Well, let me ask you this, Counselor. Can your commission just do anything that we have no supervision over, even if it's totally unreasonable? For years, the FWC have told you that they provided the fishing industry with nets that are commercially viable. Through the threat of an APAGA investigation, House Speaker Benz forced the FWC to test the nets against our claims. Those tests proved that the FWC mandated nets result in 98% waste. Now listen to the FWC's attorney, Jonathan Glogau, admit that he and the FWC knew they lied for 10 years. The, the information that was gleaned from those tests was exactly what the agency expected. They knew that the three-inch net would gill legal-sized fish, and they knew that the two-inch net was going to gill uh, undersized fish. The tested three-inch mesh net caught 97% marketable fish and no illegal fish, while the FWC's two-inch mesh net caught 98% illegal juvenile fish. So now you know the FWC knowingly lied to you and to the courts for 10 years about the viability of their mandated two-inch mesh net. It is not economically reasonable for a fisherman to go out there and whack the undersized fish. They're going to not going to do that. Really? So what alternative has the FWC offered? None. Pay close attention. The rule does not require the use of a two-inch net. Two inches is the maximum. If they're gilling undersized fish and making it uneconomical for them to for fishermen to use a two-inch net, they can reconfigure their net. They can use smaller mesh size. As we say in our brief, in Texas, they limit them to one inch. Not two inch, but one inch. So how viable is a one inch mesh net? Listen to the FWC's own fishery expert, Mr. Gil McRae. What are your opinions on that? Well, certainly the relationship between mesh size and bycatch holds as you decrease as you decrease mesh size, you'll catch more of what you're not trying to catch because it's less selective, right? So we, we said earlier that a two-inch mesh net is less selective than a three-inch mesh net. It catches things other than what you're targeting. So those relationships would hold if you reduce the mesh size further. A, a, a smaller mesh net would be less selective even than the two-inch. So you would catch a number of things you're not trying to catch. Now the other issue is the net would also become less viable as a commercial gear, uh, even less viable than the two inch mesh because it's not selective. The FWC is knowingly selling our commercial fishermen licenses then forcing them to use gear that they know will never catch legal sized fish under an amendment whose only purpose was to prevent unnecessary killing, over harvest, and waste. For 10 years, the FWC staff lied to our legislators that they couldn't fix the net problem. We want you to hear for yourself the truth from the FWC's own mouth. Ex-Miami Dolphin and FWC Commissioner Dwight Stevenson questions whether or not the FWC can legally change the mesh size of nets. Listen to head FWC Commissioner Barreto's answer. Do we have the, do we have the right to change from two to three legally? That's in the though. That the, was answer, all. the answer is yes. Legally, we, we, we can move that mesh size from two inches to three inches absolutely we have the authority to do that okay we have that authority we can move to four inches if we want that settles the fwc staff's lies to many of our elected lawmakers that the fwc could not fix the net problem despite the tremendous suffering our community has endured under a decade of corrupt fwc rule this is the attitude and priorities of fwc commissioner Bredo. it is what it is and we need to move on there is so many great and bigger issues that we need to be dealing with with this agency. Really? Like what? Humanities, with respect to listing process, with respect to, and I could just name them on and on. FWC Commissioners Kathy Barco and ex-Miami Dolphin Hall of Fame Center Dwight Stevenson get it. Listen to Commissioner Stevenson. Try to make it work uh, so that, you know, everybody wins here. I mean, the resource could win. I mean, if there's that much killing going on and byproduct, you know, that we're losing out on from the two-inch mesh versus the three-inch mesh, 
or um, you know, then we got people, you know, their livelihood is, you know, they're able to make a living, they're able to pay their light bills and water bills and house bills. The answer is no. The FWC are forcing otherwise honest citizens in small coastal communities with no other means to make a living to become criminals in order to survive. On top of that, the FWC secured huge civil fines against fishermen from the legislature in exchange for fixing the net problem five years ago. They lied. Need proof? Ask ex-representative Will Kendrick, ex-chair of the House Natural Resources Committee. Kendrick's testified to this fact before a legislative delegation in the panhandle in late February of 09. What about the courts? Here's your proof that the FWC is knowingly lying to you about substantive constitutional due process. Since there are no draw-out hearings for our issues, the FWC have lied to the legislature for a decade about there being adequate due process available through the courts. When we get to court on an issue as clear as the two-inch mesh, the FWC then claims that we have no right to challenge them in court. Listen for yourself. There's a question here whether we draw, where we draw the line in the courts as to whether a rational basis is presented or not. It's not for the court to debate the wisdom of the legislative determination, or in this case, quasi-legislative determination. Well, let me ask you this, Counselor. Can your commission just do anything and we have no supervision over it, even if it's totally unreasonable? Precisely. Does that sound like we have substantive constitutional due process to you? There's no executive, legislative, or judicial separation of powers. The FWC is killing our environment, economy, constitution, and most importantly, our citizens. We have three wishes. That the Senate Select Committee request the FWC to keep their promise of five years ago to allow larger mesh nets in order to protect the environment, economy, and citizens. Two, summon ex-representative Mitch Needleman to testify about the complete lack of substantive constitutional due process for those who live under FWC rule. And three, launch an APAGA investigation upon the FWC. We have overwhelming evidence of corruption and intentional deprivation of citizens' constitutional protections. You will find our witnesses impeccable, our proof irrefutable, and the existence of the completely autonomous FWC unacceptable in the United States of America. Please investigate our claims and stop the abuse of your constituents. For more information, please contact David Griggs, Vice President of Fishing for Freedom. Every official in the state of Florida has sworn to uphold the United States and Florida Constitution, including the constitutional protections of its citizens. Please help. Well, let me ask you this, Counselor. Can your commission just do anything and we have no supervision over it, even if it's totally unreasonable? based on his, the historical use of nets, based on the advice of their experts, that the two-inch mesh rule would be a reasonable, a reasonable place to draw the line. The FWC staff has made a great effort to lead the courts to believe that their version of a say net's historical usage actually relates to today's useless, wasteful net. If you notice on the 2005 FWC PowerPoint for the commissioners, the saints pictured are rectangular, flat, and without wings, pockets, or braille lines. This is a true historical saying. Note the rounded shape from the cork to the lead line created by the braille lines. 90% of the net was called the wing. This section, representing only 10% of the net, was called a bunt, sock, or pocket. The wings used large mesh to allow the juvenile fish to escape, while the pocket, sock, or bunt was the only part of a historical sand net to use small mesh of 2.5 inches or less. After the juvenile fish escaped through the large mesh in the wings, legal, marketable fish were then herded into the pocket for capture. Historical seine nets had one-tenth the bycatch rate of the staff-designed seine net. 
When you hear the staff or their attorneys use the words historical usage, remember the truth. Additionally, large mesh rectangular nets historically only had a 3% bycatch average. Throughout this video, never forget that the Supreme Court stated the only purpose of the amendment is the following. The Supreme Court told us to buy opinion. The singular sole purpose of the amendment is to protect the resource from unnecessary and wasteful killing of the resource. Remembering the sole purpose of the amendment, listen carefully to what the FWC admitted in this case. Counsel, let, let me ask you this. Does the two-inch net uh, gill or capture, I, I, I'm not a fisherman, 90% of illegal fish, when they, when they ran those tests... When they ran the tests, yeah, what happened? 90, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, Your Honor, but that doesn't sound out of line. 90% of the fish that were gilled... That's were, what Mr. Mallory did. Well, I, I, I'm did. not questioning his, his that. I mean, 90% of the fish that were gilled were juvenile. Now that the FWC admitted two-inch mesh nets produced 90% waste, listen to this. What the hearing officer found seven years ago is borne out. It was found that the two-inch net would not, would not, and Mr. Rudlow testified at that hearing too, and he said the same thing in that hearing. And, and what the hearing officer found, as I read to you before, was there be, would be no unnecessary, un, unreasonable amount of unnecessary killing, and it wouldn't hurt the resource. That's what our experts continue to say. That's what our affidavits continue to say, and that's what the statistics bear out. For over 10 years, the FWC legal staff have relied upon a 1997 court decision that was proven to be based on false testimony. Listen. The hearing officer in paragraph 55 of the order, back on the rule challenge, said, quote, no dangerous level of unnecessary killing or waste will occur. Counsel, let, let me ask you this. Does the two-inch net uh, gill or capture, I, I, I'm not a fisherman, 90% of illegal fish, when they, when they ran those tests? When they ran the tests, yeah, what happened? 90, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, Your Honor, but that doesn't sound out of line. 90% of the fish that were gilled That's were, what Mr. Mallory did. Well, I, I, I'm did. not questioning his, his that. I mean, 90% of the fish that were gilled were juvenile. Upcoming, remember the two-inch mesh became ruled in 1997 before the MFC FWC ever tested a two-inch mesh net. Sir, if I might ask a question. I'm sorry. Uh, I would, I would like to know if the evidence has been presented to the trial court was presented at the time the ALJ entered the ruling that you just quoted to. The specific test that they're talking about was not. But there was evidence and opinion testimony presented to the hearing officer that allowed her to make those uh, determinations. In paragraph 37 of the final order, the hearing officer says, in formulating the proposed rule, the commission was presented with extensive comments, technical information, and post-amendment updates of earlier surveys. The specific evidence was not presented. Of course, it wasn't, it wasn't generated until last year. In addition, since then, in 1998, we submitted tests, independent tests conducted at the FWC. Summarily rejected, refused to look at them. As a result of the staff's rejection of our tests, it took eight years to force the staff to conduct tests that proved the two-inch mesh nets were wasting the resource at a 98% rate. Ready to hear a little more insanity? The selection of two inches in paragraph 76 was historically based, rational, and practical. Here's what the FWC relied upon in this case. The only case that's really relied on by the Attorney General is the old two-inch rule case which came, which went to the to an ALJ, and, with, that was, and, and that concerned a same net. The finding was, the testimony of Mr. Brent, Mr. Brent Winter and Mr. Russell Nelson was that less than 5% of the fish caught would be bycatch, 5% max. Now, we know it's 90%. Is that a problem? That's a serious problem. So what did Mr. Brent Winter say in his deposition eight years after telling the ALJ that there would be a negligible amount of bycatch with two-inch mesh nets? Their own expert said in a deposition, if there is a substantial bycatch, that's not good for resource protection. Contrary to his opinion, nine year, eight years ago in the two-inch rule case, Why 
question to be considered when you get better data, newer data, and as I, data, as I understand, your client agreed with the appellant to go out and test these nets, and when the results appear to be adverse to your client's position, then the tests were terminated. Is that a... That is not, absolutely not what happened, Your Honor. From Lies to Law, the Evolution of an FWC Felony. In 2003, Ted Forsgren and the CCA requested the FWC increase penalties for violations of net laws. The CCA proposal would create a felony out of possessing, transporting, or using a net greater than 1,000 square feet in state waters. In addition, thousands of dollars in civil fines were to be stacked in excess of fines charged by the courts, unknown to the judges. Beholden to the CCA, the FWC usually did whatever the CCA desired. This time would be no different. FWC staff were directed to work with the CCA and commercial fishermen to develop a proposal that was mutually agreeable. Meetings were held in June, September, and November of 2003. At the end of the final meeting, three proposals were presented. Proposal number one. Fishermen voted 10 to 1 to tie the CCA proposal to the following proposal so that fishermen would have a choice whether or not to break the law in order to catch fish. Two 500 square foot nets made of 37093 to be approved material with no mesh size restriction to be connected by lead and float lines but no mesh connection. The proposed net would stop the unnecessary killing and waste caused by the FWC net, comply with the sole purpose of Article 10, Section 16, and comply with Florida Statute 370093-2B. The lone dissenting vote came from Ted Forsgren of the CCA. Proposal number two. The CCA wanted their proposed rules enforced without any concessions. Only one of the 11 attendees wanted the CCA proposal by itself. Guess who? Good guess. Proposal number three. Since FWC Commander Colonel Julie Jones informed the group that there was no smoking gun pointing to the rampant illegal netting that the CCA claimed, the group also voted 10 to 1 for a change in the net without the CCA's proposal. Once again, two 500 square foot nets made of 370093 2B approved material with no mesh size restriction to be connected by lead and float lines but no mesh connection. But as agreed on in Proposal 1, fishermen were willing to concede to stiffer penalties in exchange for reasonable net rules. By now, you know the only dissenter. These three meetings, just like every FWC meeting we've attended in the last nine years, were held in bad faith, without any FWC intention of accepting a mutual agreement. FWC staff told the legislature that we supported increased fines and penalties and told Representative Kendrick, committee chair, that they would fix the net problem. The CCA proposal was signed into law and the fishermen, as always, were shafted. The FWC lied about fixing the net problem. Representative Kendrick chastised the commission for lying to him. Only one FWC official ever had enough integrity to apologize. We got off on a really, really, really bad footing with the first set of meetings that we had that um, that we that Jackie Falls called, and the voting. There's you you, you you notice this is your this is your technical group. First of all, I think you think you you see that this is only commercial fishers. First of all. Um, 
So this is not a matter of voting or doing anything like that. Um, I apologize for what happened in those first few meetings because it was it was seemed it was misleading because it seemed like you were going to get a product out of it, and obviously you didn't get that product out of it. But um, having said all of that, the second place where we have failed you is in trying to accommodate the legal requirements pushed to us from several states' attorneys to put into rule how to measure a net to do some of those things. When we took up the gear rule, we told you at every turn that two-inch stretch mesh was not a part of that consideration. We were taking that part of the rule and putting it in in not making changes. And I really wanted to push that decision making to the commission and not be that be a part of that gear rule. And of course the train jumped the track there and it just seemed like we were ignoring you at every turn. So my apologies. We've obviously gotten off on the wrong foot and, and let's hope that this group that that does not happen again. But it happened again. Little did we know the FWC's bad faith and lying would be far worse this time. In fact, here's a network group prophecy from FFF member Keith Ward before the FWC lied again. We voted 12 to 1 when we did this felony thing. And it, uh, it posed, and it went, the 1 got the felony and we got the jab. Well, that never should have been a vote. I mean, that was just... And I, that's what I'm asking is, we're trying to work with y'all, we're trying to work with y'all in good faith. We're trying to get back and work, and if we get stuck again, you know, how many, how many times can you be, you know, part of my expression, been over the table before you just get tired of it and just can't take no more, you know? Right. Anyway, after two meetings, the FWC and commercial fishermen agreed to test two nets. The FWC informed us that the test would be conducted as soon as possible. My commitment to you is to get it done as quickly as possible, but I can't put the rule on that. In 1997, the FWC's net expert, Mr. Brent Winter, testified for the FMRI that the two-inch mesh nets would only have 5% bycatch rates. Mr. Winter's testimony resulted in the judge believing him and passing the two-inch mesh rule. With net tests upcoming, Mr. Winner's opinion changed a bit. To show to the commission, we may not need a detailed study to show you could have fished these two inch nets forever. And, and believe me, everyone knows and has heard a million times over how it's drilling smaller fish. And, and with the way that they're designed, no one can argue that. Great. Mr. Winner's only eight years too late with the facts. The first DCA Chief Judge, Edwin Browning Jr., forces the FWC attorney to reveal the joint net test results. Does the two-inch net uh, gill or capture, I, I, I'm not a fisherman, 90% of illegal fish, when they, when they ran those tests... When they ran the tests... Yeah, what happened? 90, I, believe, I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, Your Honor, but that doesn't sound out of line. 90% of the fish that were gilled... That's were, what Mr. Mallory did. Well, so I, I, I'm him. not questioning his, his that. I mean, 90% of the fish that were gilled were juvenile. We're trying to work with y'all. We're trying to work with y'all in good faith. We're trying to get back and work. And if we get stuck again, you know, how many how many times can you be, you know, part of my expression, been over the table before you just get tired of it and just can't take no more, you know? In good faith, during the net meetings, Ronald Crum made sure the FWC knew we would file an injunction after the state tests were completed because of the two-inch mesh rule being applied to every net after July 1st, 2003. And here's why. How do we keep our retail markets in business from July to January? How does the fish run survive from July to January? They do stamp, they won't do it. What do we do? The staff had no answer. What I would like to ask you, Carl, is this. Don't be offended if I file an injunction. Because it's only for doing this. I mean, I would, I would not be offended because I want the study on in the injunction only until what's found out in the study. Right. As I understand, your client agreed with the appellate to go out and test these nets, and when the re results appeared to be adverse to your client's position, then the tests were terminated. Is that a that is not case? absolutely not what happened, Your Honor? Another FWC lie. The judge was right. That is exactly what happened. How many times can you be, 
you know, part of my expression, been over the table before you just get tired of it and just can't take no more, you know. Right. Where is your justice, honor, and integrity, FWC? Well, let me ask you this, Councilman. Can your commission just do anything and we have no supervision over it, even if it's totally unreasonable? As long as the agency presents a rational basis for the rule on the record, then that's all they have to do. For more information, visit http://fishingforfreedom.net. Thank you.